What is going on everybody? I hope everyone is doing well. All right, we have a very long overdue <laughs> train review that I haven't done in many years and uh, maybe a little rusty. But anyways, with that said, we are going to be doing a train review on the Rapido Dash 840 CM. To start things off, we are going to unbox it. As you can see, it's the Dash 8-40CM. Here's some of the paint schemes. Pull this out and it reveals the jewel case. These are really nice. You can stack everything on top of each other. I really like these uh, jewel cases. Right away, you can see that there is another plastic on top to secure the train inside so it doesn't flop around, which is really nice. That comes apart. Then we got the soft plastic right here to protect the the train from the hard plastic as well as there are some styrofoams in here just to give it that more extra cushioning and also give it that more wedge just like these two up here so we can go ahead remove these very so gently <clears throat> The way I do it is I'll put my hand over, flip it upside down, slowly to take it off. All right, we're going to put the train off to the side here. Underneath, we got some traction wheels, an extra part, and a little baggie. Then we have the instruction manual here inside. Hopefully, I can remember to uh, fold this back the same way. If you guys want to put it on pause, I'll get my fingers out of the way. You can go ahead and read it. Then the other side is the French side. Right, to take the train out, <clears throat> there we go. All right, let's put the train on the track. We'll take closer looks and also we'll remove some of the star from that's still left over. to start this off we are gonna start off with function 8 function 8 is the startup sequence for the train so we're gonna start the train up Function zero. The one thing I really like is that Rapido program the lights to dim off and dim on. So it's not just on off, on off like some manufacturers. So uh, yeah, it's really, really nice. Then we're going to go to function one, which is the bell. Function two is the horn. Function three is brake squeal. This one is activated when the train is moving uh, it's supposed it's supposed to simulate when the wheels are squealing on the tracks function four okay so function four is dynamic brakes and again this is another feature that is done when the engine is in motion this is the doppler horn when the trains uh, come across the road
F6's ditch lights. Yeah, end scale with ditch lights. That's awesome. F7 is dimming of headlights. F9 is the drive hold throttle. F10 is engine brake sound. F11 is rock lights. I'm not sure what this one is doing as it's just dimming the lights on and off. F13 is the backup lights. F18 is air compressor. Okay, F8, we're gonna do the shutdown sequence. And you can hear the tank still sputtering there. And as always, they always have to put in some Easter eggs. So uh, here, check this out. All right, so that brought back a lot of memories. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, that was a theme song for Hockey Night in Canada. Uh, yeah, that was uh, that's pretty nostalgic and that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, next Easter egg. I fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberry. Now go away or I shall taunt you a second time. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, another Easter egg. All right, if you know what that is, why don't you go ahead, drop it in the comments down below. Let me know what TV show that's from. All right, the next one, the next Easter egg. We need a nuclear reaction to, to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! Okay, that's All right, like I said, the last ones, if you guys know what that one is, drop it down in the comments down below. Let me know what uh, TV show or movie that's from. Just as always, we are going to be using the my app that I have here for iOS. It's uh, TouchCab. We're going to go ahead and start up the train, see how it goes. Yeah, that's freaking slow. <laughs> that is, yeah, I'm going to have to zoom in just to show you on how slow this thing is going. Because in the camera itself, it doesn't even look like it's moving when I was panned out. But to give you guys a good indication of, like, a good reference is look at the ties, the rail ties, how slow it's going in between each tie. That's, and that's step one, as you guys can see. Cranking it up to step 10. Okay, next one that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go full, uh, full blast on the throttle. You're gonna see that uh, the train is already programmed with motion in it. Um, motion characteristics as if it was pulling a load or pulling a bunch of cars uh, whether it's for acceleration and especially for deceleration uh, so these uh, motion prototypical uh, simulations is to show you know the train pulling a heavy load or trying to stop a heavy load which the momentum always uh, reduces the, the the acceleration speed and also reduces the stopping distance of the train itself so we're going to go ahead and just go full blast 
126 steps and it's accelerating, accelerating, accelerating. So there it is right there. Out of this. All right, so this next test on what it's gonna be is showing on how long it takes for the train to slow down. Uh, and again, this is just to simulate the actual train characteristics. Uh, when a train needs to stop for whatever reason, I, I don't know, like 90 kilometers an hour, and they slam on the brakes, they don't stop right away like a car does. So when the train reaches about to this point right here of the layout, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to slam on the brakes or throttle all the way back down, and I will follow the train with the camera. Ready? And, okay. So my thoughts on the on on this train the detailing on it is absolutely phenomenal functionality everything works and that's how you want it to go right <laughs> everything works uh, there was one little thing and i think i don't think it's the train i think it's my layout for all those who have uh, tortoise switch machines and you have the wire sticking up into where the hole is for the switch so that the um, piano wire can throw the switch for whatever reason it, the detailing on the trucks or yeah on the on the drive axles it seems like it's a little bit lower than like Bachman and the rest of them and again I think that has to do with the whole prototypical thing so what was happening is the train will be going around as it passes those some of those switches not all of them it get hung up on the piano wire I thought I cut them down short enough <laughs> but apparently I didn't uh, it works for like the cattle, the, the Bachman, what else do I have? Fox Valley that we have, I have one Fox Valley. So simple fix, I just went around with my side cutters and I just snipped the, the piano wire shorter. Uh, other than for that, that, that like again, I think that's my layout, that's on my side, that's not on the train itself. Um, yeah, but really, honestly, can't really find any, any downside to this train, which is pretty good, like I'm trying. <laughs> I nitpicked at my layout. Oh, it's a solid train. All right, if any of you have this train, I wanna really know what your thoughts are about it. So why don't you go ahead, leave a comment down below. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's N scale or HO scale, cause I know that they did, a uh, Rapido did a run for HO scale, how that one is. Let me know what your thoughts are on the train. All right, if you enjoyed this video, why don't you go ahead, think about leaving a thumbs up. Uh, that helps us with the algorithm and also pushing our videos out into the YouTube-verse. YouTube-verse? YouTube-verse. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> also, think about subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that way you are notified for every time we release a video. We'll see you next time. Keep on modeling.